With the lockdown measures that have been put in place by governments across the world to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, instead of physically going to markets, restaurants, and even stores, people are now turning to online delivery platforms. In this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, we take a look at the increased demand and the rise of e-commerce here in the country. I will be your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. COVID-19 outbreak has shook the world and changed how we do things. People as well as companies have turned to digital tools to be able to operate effectively. And here in the country, e-commerce business operators are now turning the virus into a boom. We have seen a good, uh, a huge increase in the interest or demand for online services. And um, this is going both uh, on online services, meaning that uh, I'm not asking for a product, but I'm, I'm fulfilling a service uh, like uh, online banking um, or transfer this or applying for whatever service, uh, as well as uh, education, because education has been uh, hugely disrupted, especially the term time, uh, student uh, term time. Um, but uh, as well, e-commerce, I think, is one of those that are uh, where we're seeing uh, a huge uh, leap in terms of adoption, uh, courtesy of COVID-19 lockdown. Today, actually, as of last week, um, in partnership with the uh, with Ministry of, uh, of ICT and Innovation and Ministry of Commerce and, uh, and Industry, Trade and Industry, um, there, there was a public. There was, there, we published a list of uh, the top nine, uh, but there's more than 25. Um, there's more than 25 e-commerce uh, platforms. These are platforms that are either in the online shopping, providing mostly essential essential products. Uh, that's groceries, but uh, also including the ones that are into the log into logistics or doing. Uh, um, uh, drop, uh, drop shipping. So the lockdown has uh, really uh, affected our rollouts because uh, we are newcomers, a very new company compared to others. So uh, it has affected us in a way of um, reaching out to uh, our, our vendors and uh, enrolling new merchants. So it has been a challenge. So uh, and. Uh, uh, it's really been difficult to reach out to them because uh, e-commerce e is a new market. It's a new mar It's a new uh, industry, as we we know. And uh, the government has been trying to create this awareness, and uh, the, the stakeholders, all of them, are trying to push this harder. So uh, when the lockdown uh, came in, again, if your new company to to fully roll out it becomes difficult because it's not on the ground fully. And actually, this uh, COVID-19, even though it's really bad and we're fighting it, which is uh, understandable, uh, on one side, uh, it has uh, boosted the awareness of online uh, trading. Most of uh, the customers have got to, to understand the importance of buying things online. So uh, even those who knew how to buy online but never tried it, they have had a reason. To, to actually buy online. With the lockdown measures, if I can say, like the online services here in Rwanda, it's improving very much. As we can see, like from the traffic we are getting on, on our platforms from the customers, from the feedback we are getting from the customers that are using it, it seems like it's a very useful, a very useful measures that is helping, that is helping them to stay safe and while still getting what they need. In the conversations we had with different players, for the online platforms to remain sustainable, business operators need to draw up a strategy that will help them maintain the momentum in post-COVID-19 Rwanda. As we were in our pre-launch uh, in December, we, we had uh, different categories of products, uh, shoes, clothes, jewelry, and uh, other products. And uh, when we entered into the lockdown, uh, most of our customers ha had to demanded us that we actually provide uh, them with groceries. So this is how uh, Umuji is positioned right now. We are trying to support the government initiatives 
uh, for providing the essentials, so the, the necessary products on the market right now. Since everyone is staying home, we are trying to provide foods and uh, other uh, needs that uh, we always need uh, from home. We have uh, managed to, to roll out uh, about 280 uh, items. And uh, we, uh, as we specifically uh, have been uploading the products that are needed uh, by, by homes. So in the last one month, just only. So uh, before that, they actually the purchasing was not that high. Since we started Orlando, it wasn't uh, easy as all normal startup. But uh, with the within the time, we managed to get vendors, customers, training us on our platform. And uh, yeah, right, like things are, uh, are being great now. Uh, if I can say like uh, from the vendor, for the vendors, uh, so far we are working with 134 vendors that are working using our platform. And uh, for the for the traffic or, or you or orders, like the volume of, under, of orders we have so far, so far we have, have around uh, 800 orders since we started. Yes, for traffic visits, we are now counting in between like uh, 3, 000, 2,000 and 3,000 visits per week. Yes, they would satisfy the demand, but the, the, the market uh, <laughs> is still small in a way in terms of uh, uh, transaction volumes. So I, I think the number is not the issue here, but uh, the size of business and the size of opportunity uh, that uh, needs to we, we need to work on. What we're seeing is um, the, uh, the, the the repurposing of uh, of technologies uh, or repurposing of certain uh, products uh, to serve the e-commerce industry. Jean Baptiste has worked in the delivery sector for over three years. We caught up with him during one of his deliveries, and he shared that this has been one of the busiest times in business for him. But nonetheless, safety precautions must be practiced at all times. I started delivering product in 2017. We started out as Jumia Food and later Jumia changed to Vuba Vuba. So you can understand that I have experienced for three years. When you look at it, the pandemic outbreak has been a big challenge globally, and it changed the way certain things are done. When you compare work before and now, we are receiving more requests, since many people are not be able to leave their homes. In a day, I deliver between 10 to 15 requests. While doing that, we have to maintain the safety precautions. We wear a face mask and we sanitize our hands every time we are in contact with our client. And sometimes the client also requests to use the sanitizer before they take the product. Unlike the e-commerce business operators, restaurants on ground are not receiving much luck. Meze Fresh, which used to be one of the busiest restaurants in Kigali due to its strategic location near businesses, has lower traffic during this time and it has turned to e-commerce platforms. The delivery is going on very well. We are working with, uh, we have like four partners so far. So online is, is okay, but we still need people to come here though. But online is still going on very well. Of course, the business has been affected by, affected by COVID-19. Our business is very seasonal. Uh, it's more touristic. So it, it, to be struggling, we can struggle because we used to get uh, very busy from May to end of September. Uh, due to that, we have sent some stuff home. Due to it, we are not so busy as we used to be. And of course, uh, Cash flow has been affected. Uh, cash flow, you, we used to receive like money from people coming here. As I said, the neighborhood, like all these buildings you see around, their offices could just come down and pay money. But online, you also have to pay the business, your partner, 
they get a certain percentage out of your business. So the cash flow is now like we don't, we're not getting enough money to pay our fixed cost. And usually restaurants have a very huge fixed cost. So we need to get like more busier to, for the business to, to keep running. Rwanda as a dynamic country is catching up with the global trends with online platforms increasingly becoming a key digital tool for trade and services. But currently, there are no specific laws on e-commerce here in the country. Uh, that's something that we're working on uh, together with the ministry and um, we're looking at the infrastructure that is needed, uh, the policy frameworks that are that are needed particularly because e-commerce um, uh, is, is really a pool of stakeholders. It's not just uh, one institution necessarily that, that oversees it. Uh, so you have a regulator for payments, you have a regulator for logistics, you have a regulator uh, for data protection. Um, but in a whole, um, there, are, there are policies that are being uh, drafted or actually they were supposed to be already uh, uh, in, um, in parliament uh, for, for, for approval or for uh, yeah, for for approval, and I think it was COVID that uh, that brought about the disruption. However, besides uh, dedicated regulation, e-commerce, there are, uh, there are other policies. Uh, for example, the digital payments uh, or the, the the digital payments policy or regulation is out uh, is available. The data protection is there. Uh, the child online protection is there. So th there's quite a number of policies and regulations that are already there that facilitate the e-commerce. Uh, even in the absence of a dedicated uh, policy. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there is very few countries around the world uh, with dedicated e-commerce regulations. Now, most of them uh, use a, a congruence of uh, different uh, policies that are that, 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 that come together rather than just a, one, a single one. That brings us to the end of today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. To interact with us, do write to us on Twitter at CNBC Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I was your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. Until next time.